Instead, we have the opportunity to make a habit of empathy, to recognize ourselves in each other. I partied a little too much, I confess. I studied just enough to get by. And once, after a particularly long evening of debauchery, <laughs> we had spilled a little too much beer, broken a few too many bottles, trashed a little too much of the dorm room. And the next day, the mess was so bad that one of the cleaning ladies came in and saw it, and she began to tear up. And a girlfriend of mine heard about this, and she said to me, that woman could have been my grandmother, Barack. She spent her days cleaning up after somebody else's mess. That woman could have been my grandmother. Which drove home the first lesson that all of us have to go through in growing up, and that is that the world does not revolve around you. You know, there's a lot of talk in this country about the federal deficit. And I think it's important for us to talk about that, but I think we should talk more about another deficit, what I call the empathy deficit. The ability to put ourselves in somebody else's shoes, to see the world through those who are different from us. The child who's hungry, the laid off steel worker, the immigrant woman who's cleaning up your dorm room. As you go on in life, cultivating this quality of empathy actually becomes harder, not easier. There's no community service requirement in the real world. No one is forcing you to care. You'll be free to live in neighborhoods with people who are exactly like yourself, went to the same schools. You can send your children to the same schools and you can narrow your concerns to what's going on in your own immediate circle. Not only that, but we live in a culture that discourages empathy. A culture that all too often tells us that our principal goal in life is to be rich, thin, young, famous, safe, and entertained. A culture where those in power all too often encourage our most selfish impulses. So there will be those who will tell you that the Americans who sleep in the streets and beg for food got there because they're all lazy and weak in spirit. That the inner city children who are trapped in dilapidated schools can't learn and won't learn, and so we should give up on them entirely. That the innocent people being slaughtered and expelled from their homes on the other side of the globe are somebody else's problem to care for. I hope you don't listen to this. I hope you choose to broaden and not contract the ambit of your concern. Not because you have an obligation to those who are less fortunate, although you do have that obligation. Not just because you have a debt to pay for those who help to get you where you are, although I do think you have that debt, but rather because you have an obligation to yourself. Because what I've found in my life is that my individual salvation depends on our collective salvation. Because it's only when you hit your wagon to something larger than yourself that you'll realize your true potential, that you'll become full grown. Cultivating empathy, challenging yourself, persevering in the face of adversity. These are qualities that I found important in my own life. But here's the interesting thing. What's true for individuals can also be true for nations. For what America needs right now, more than ever, is a sense of purpose that guides us through the challenges that lie ahead. A maturity that we seem to have lost somewhere along the way. A willingness to engage in a sober, adult conversation about our future. See the world through other people's eyes. Now, empathy is a quality of character that can change the world. 